Good evening. Uh, I'm James Goodale, and you're watching the Digital Age. We've got a great program for you tonight, Rathergate. And we're going to talk about the panel that issued a report on Rathergate. And we're going to try to ask ourselves, is this any good? Now, it's been reported as being, you know, the best thing since peanut butter. But we're going to ask ourselves, are there any flaws in the Rather report? And joining us to discuss this momentous question is Tom Lipscomb of the Chicago Sun-Times, who has written critically of Kerry. And uh, during the campaign, we want to hear from him what he thinks about this report. And Dan Ackman of Forbes.com, who's had a piece on the Forbes website, critical of the report. See if I can explain this report to you, Tom. This report came out and was highly critical of CBS. First of all, CBS, it said, reported too quickly. They did it too fast. Secondly, they hired four experts to authenticate the document. And while two of them did that, the report was highly critical of the use of these experts. The report was critical about what they called chain of custody, which means that CBS didn't follow where the document went uh, from the beginning, where the sources were, where it was, so forth and so on. And lastly, I find this rather strange, the report itself uh, didn't reach a judgment as to whether it was a forgery or not. Uh, did you think I stated pretty much what the report is about? That's about right, yeah. Okay, now let me ask you this, Tom. Were you surprised that when this report criticized these experts for not doing their job and CBS not looking after what they did, that the panel didn't hire its own experts to determine whether this document was a forgery or not? I think that you put your finger on it. The, the most interesting thing about this report was that it criticized CBS for doing exactly what it didn't do itself. Uh, the blogosphere, the mob of bloggers, as the Columbia Journalism Review called it in their report, critical of the criticism of CBS. Uh, the mob of bloggers got some pretty good experts. I got one in the Sun Times, Philip Buffard, 30 years at NCR, a forensic expert on typefaces, a guy who owns the largest typeface in the world organization. Uh, there are a lot of experts out there. I was astounded the law firm didn't get themselves one because they, what they did is they avoided two conclusions. One conclusion was they could not prove the documents were not authentic. Right. Uh, proving a negative is always <clears throat> a difficulty. Secondly, they, they did not find it established that there was any political bias in the case. And yet if you read their evidence, uh, and there's other evidence as well which they could have gotten and didn't, and we'll go into that in a minute, it looks like both these two are sustainable based upon the report alone. What was your reaction to the fact that they didn't go out and, and hire these uh, experts? Well, I, I think that really the question is what not what the reporter, what the writers of the report should have done. It's what the reporters who did the report on CBS did. Now, they did hire experts. They did make an effort to authenticate this report. You know, maybe they were wrong. Maybe the, they mean, the documents are bogus. I mean, that's, a lot of people are sure they are. But the real question is, what did the reporters do? What effort did they make? And I think they made an ample effort. And whether they were wrong or not is not really the question at the beginning, although it's certainly a question, a question at the end. I totally right. disagree with that. Okay, well, let me, let's just, uh, let's put the fat in the fire then. Okay. Okay. Dan says it's an ample effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's just review what uh, the effort was. They went out and hired four of these people, okay? Two threw up their hands. I didn't say it at the beginning. But one said, the whole thing's good. And the second guy said, look, I've looked at the signatures on these documents, the ones that are alleged to be fraudulent, and I've compared them with authentic documents. The signatures are the same. So why isn't that perfectly adequate? Because they basically, two, two of the people took a pass that were their experts. Another one said, basically, I can only authenticate the signature. And the third one went along with the game. Only one out of four? Uh, now, let's, let me start, with, get, come to that point. Yeah. Furthermore, Mary Mapes herself uttered the following well, who's statement. Who's Mary Mapes? The producer of the program, well, who, was, the program who was actually right. fired by CBS, unlike the three who are sitting around negotiating right now for a better deal. Uh, and basically, Mary Mapes says, I'm not going to let some little TH get in the way of a big story. Well, that's a quote on. from her. Now, that's, we're talking here about the typeface evidence. She's arguing with one of her own experts. Can I, can I stop sure. you for a moment? Yeah. Can you just tell us what TH is? It's a superscript. It's like the 4th of July. 
Okay. okay. And what does she mean? She's not going to let TH well, get, the, get in the way of it. One of her experts had said, hey, there are all these superscripts and subscripts that don't exist on typewriters back in 1971. They certainly don't exist on the Olympia typewriter the National Guard used at that time. They, on, matter of fact, only existed on one typewriter at that time, and they don't come out this way. This is what the, her own expert said. She waved that off. She wasn't going to let a little TH get in the way of the Let me ask story. you, in the, in, the, in the real world of journalism, and we're not in the real legal world, we're in the in journalism world. You know, you've got four, four experts. Uh, is it reasonable to expect, as Tom wants you to expect, that each of the four is going to say, hey, all, we agree with one another? Now, and, well, I mean, if you really is, want to you know, talk yeah. about the legal authentication of documents, when the author of the document is dead, basically you can't do it. So, but, but I think you have to step back a little. You have to really look at the broader context of this. This was a story that had been pursued for a long time. The new part of the story supposedly were these documents. But the documents didn't really, there were, there were not dramatic revelations in the documents. They basically were minor points in a larger story that everyone knows to be true and knew to be true then. That there was, uh, that Bush had been in the National Guard and then somehow he got to Alabama. So there was really no major, a you know, broad reason to question the documents. And even after the fact, the documents, the secretary of the author of the documents said, yeah, that's what he thought. Now, maybe somebody retyped the documents, maybe the documents were totally false, but if someone was going to go to the trouble of pulling a hoax on CBS or the public, or if CBS was pulling a hoax on the public, which no one really suggests, then they would have done something a little bit more dramatic than that. So I don't think that there's really that big a deal about the authentication of these documents at all. And the, the question is a very minor one in a larger, in a larger story. A very minor one in no, a larger story? No, I think story? it's a very major one. I I think the question, it goes to motive. Uh, if you're going to wave off a lot of negative signals from your own counsel and your own experts, is that because you're impassioned to prove a political point and you don't want to pay attention to the evidence in front of you? Let's take a look at what came out yesterday. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, let me just, okay. I'm not going to get you away sure. with that because you're saying, do I understand you to say that this report was politically motivated? I, I will come to that point later in the show. But right now, let's talk about why. I can it, already wait. Well, why Mary Mapes and CBS itself ignored its own experts' arguments with them about the validity of these. And we can go, this typeface thing is very important. It's the equivalent of having a 707 uh, in the Roman Forum in a movie about Julius Caesar. Uh, you kind of know there's some verisimilitude <coughs> problem there, okay? And when you have the difference between computer typesetting and typewriter typesetting, I'm an expert in this. I have six patents yeah. in intellectual property in this area. Uh, it's real obvious to almost any forensic expert. And none of the people, by the way, who were quoted by uh, Kirkpatrick uh, Lockhart, is it? Uh, That's the law firm okay, that did the report. Or CBS are right. really forensic typeface people. One of them kind of was. That's why he raised the superscript TH. Yeah, but hey, Tom, you've been in the journalism. Sure. Book. Uh, you're now with Sun Times. This caps a wondrous career of uh, being a book publisher, a writer, everything under the sun. Uh, I think Dan's, Dan's point in part is, you know, you're setting up a standard that uh, is only germane to what you know about the expertise of people who can look at type. You ran a company that was a computer company. These are reporters. They don't run computer companies. The bloggers got on it within 24 hours, and they were right. Bill Ardolino runs a little blog down in Washington called NDC. He, was, he got Phil Buford, who was a perfect choice for an expert, better than anybody CBS had. Powerline.blog, voted by Time Magazine, the number one blog in the country, got its experts on it. Good people were looking at this. And by the way, I tried to get George Bush on these documents back in January. What do you I mean you tried to get oh, I was convinced that George Bush You saw been... these same documents no, in January? No, but I'd heard about them. Okay. You had heard about yep. them in and January? I, I suspect that these documents are hoary with age, have been around a long time. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Ann Richards hadn't had them put in front of her in a gubernatorial election against George Bush and said, no one's going to fall for well, this. Well, let me try this on, on Dan. <laughs> I know this uh, may not be the central issue as far as you're concerned, but he makes a, a good point, perhaps, that, all right, the reporters are running around, and uh, they didn't pick up. We're running around for four years in the case of Mapes, generally speaking, uh, two weeks in the case of the particular story, and in those two weeks, they didn't pick up what the bloggers picked up in 24 hours. What well, do you think of that? The, th the thing is, if you look at these documents, when I first took a look at them, I didn't see anything wrong with them, and I'm certainly no expert. But I can see that if someone notices a problem with it, it's something they're going to notice right away. It's not something that you study and consider for a long time. If you notice the TH, you notice it. 
and maybe the, the TH is a telltale sign that these documents were not genuine. But the point is, there's no reason to believe that these reporters who are doing this story made that conclusion on their own. Now, they had experts. I think it's extraordinary to even hire experts. I mean, I don't know many reporters who do that. But CBS did that, and they put a lot of study into this story. Now, maybe they got it wrong, but it's not an error. It's a negligent error, if that. It's certainly not a reckless error. Now, like, when, when you get a, uh, I don't know if you get documents, but all reporters at some time in their career, right. At documents, and uh, I, I don't know what you do, but uh, what do you think of uh, what they did with respect to acting as reporters? Here's what they did, essentially. They asked themselves, reporters did, uh, Mary Mapes did, do these uh, documents mesh with the factual pattern that and we they know? they absolutely did. Yeah. No, what, and the documents themselves are, are no big deal. Basically, they say Bush did not show up for his physical. Bush wanted to get be involved with his, in his campaign for his dad's friend. Now, nobody disputes that. Everybody knows that. So the documents were basically I a minor it. supporting point. Well, maybe <laughs> you dispute it, but you know. Uh, I basically, everybody knows Bush was in the National Guard and he was in Alabama, mm -hmm. and he didn't fly once he went to Alabama. So the question is, are these these documents are really the pimple on the backside of a much larger report? I think if I was going to flaw the report, it would be for for dredging up old news that everyone knew already. Yeah, this is the report on CBS, not right, the, the CBS. The report. I want to ask you now, Tom. Yes. Uh, focus on meshing. Yep. Because that's, uh, as I understand it, a typical re repertorial practice. In other words, you get documents over the transom. Uh, what do you do? You try to uh, use some common sense to figure out whether they're authentic. One of the things you do is you look at the facts stated in the documents yep. and you try to mesh it uh, with others. Now, why is that a perfectly good process? Well, there's nothing wrong with the process. They just didn't follow it. Remember Casey Stingle about the New York Mets? He said, doesn't anybody around here play this game? Uh, what we saw was a hack job by a first-class newsroom acting like a bunch of amateurs. They didn't mesh anything. I'll give you a case in point. The smoking gun document was the one where he didn't report for the physical, okay, i.e., he, he, he violated an order of a commanding officer. That, that impressed me. But when we look into it, we find, number one, the date in the document the physical was supposed to take place was a holiday at the base. There was no, the, the drill, there was no drill that day. It was one week later that Killian's letter said report for drill on next Saturday. So maybe the date was wrong in the document. Uh, no, the date was the date of his reporting by Killian, if Killian wrote the document, and we'll leave all that up in the air, was the wrong date. Number two, it was sent to the wrong home address for George Bush. Uh, I mean, this a happens lot th every day in the world. Yes, it does. But it, so, it, the old joke is it doesn't always happen in the same laboratory. No, okay? I mean, We've got I mean, a lot of things going on at the same time here that are all very weird. And I would love to have gotten George Bush. I hated those National Guard rich boys who went out there. And I tried to nail him back in January. Well, I, let me try this. The okay. problem is he was already nailed. Uh, yeah. No, he wasn't. Okay, but let's no just deal, with, let's deal with, a mesh, with the mesh point just a little yeah. bit more. Because right. uh, Tom's argument is that there's not perfect meshing. Now, when you read the report, you find, to uh, your surprise, at least mine, that uh, Mary Mapes submitted 40 pages of meshing. 40 pages. Now, uh, Tom's point is, you know, there are going to be inconsistencies. Well, I think the question would be, well, probably so. Uh, such is life. But 40 pages of meshing, uh, wouldn't that be, a, a, I mean, a, be enough to satisfy the usual reporter? You, you would think so. I mean, and I wrote that, that they're applying courtroom standards to, to, to a newsroom, which I think is wrong. But if you even do apply courtroom standards after the fact, if Bush were to sue CBS for libel, which of course he would never do, being the president, but if he were to do that, they would have an excellent defense. Everybody knows that you, you the, their standards recklessness. In no way is this anywhere near that standard. They did a lot well, of work to verify their question. report. There's an interesting question. There's an interesting question. You answer that. You've uh, been in this game for years. You bet. Let's look at one simple it, thing. Was it, was it reckless, libelously reckless? Absolutely. Brian Ross at ABC, who's, no, who's absolutely no conservative, right. said on Howie Kurtz's show on Sunday, and he's absolutely right, he says, rather calling Burkett an irreproachable source is mind-boggling. Okay, we, we get said that? that. This is said by Brian Ross at ABC. Well, what he, does he, know? he knows a lot. He's a damn fine investigative <laughs> reporter, uh, and he was. Th that's really it. When you call Burkett, who was a well-known whack job around Texas for many, many years, had been in a mental hospital for heaven's sake, uh, and was an anti-Bush guy. Well, do you think he did me. the documents? I haven't got a clue who did the documents. I'm working on the story, however. Exactly, and, uh, and neither does anyone else. No, and nobody and knows who did the, the panel. Do you know what the panel? The panel concludes 
that they can't uh, express an opinion whether they're true or false. But they didn't find Lucy Ramirez either. You know, you, you, in other words, a simple reporting job. If the, if the panel conducted itself as a journalistic organization, it failed. If it conducted itself as a legal firm, it failed. So the job that Rather proposed for himself, if these documents are false, I want to get that story before anybody else, which he said on the evening news the day after this all happened. That's the job that needs to be done, like the New York Times did on Jason Blair. They re-reported all his stories. It was a lot of hard work. That's the way you come up with where the problems are. It isn't really a law firm type job normally, but neither did CBS do a very good job. Re-report, I don't understand. They re they, Are you talking Jason, about after the after it's been after, brought to their attention? Yeah, that's right. How well, I, mean, I think that's a different that's a different question. Now you you I, you might agree that after this is brought to CBS's attention, right. uh, they may have uh, they might have done something else. Right. Would you if, agree with that? If there was an error here, yeah. the error was in the reaction, not in the report. Now, CBS, once the bloggers did point out problems, they should have then backed off a little and said, yeah. we, well, they could have defended their, their report in total, which I think they, they should do pro and probably did do, but they should have said maybe the documents are wrong. Now, if this was a court case, maybe these documents wouldn't be admitted, but it wouldn't affect the larger case. That's what's so crazy about this whole thing. It's basically a very small part of the story. It's a pimple on the butt of the story, and it shouldn't be this big a deal well, how about even that? How, now. how about that? Here's, here's the argument, that uh, we've lost track of what the story is and that uh, the story is not that much different as presented uh, in the documents from what the, the story had been known before the documents come out. This and so we're focusing on the wrong thing, just because we want to make it a political okay. thing to satisfy I have to question this. The story was known. The story not only is not known to this day, it doesn't the exist. Story the story you're known. talking about is not known. The, the, let's not well, go along with the this. story. The story about. that George Bush was using preferential treatment to get in the National Guard and to fly, and furthermore, he skipped a physical when he was given a direct order by his commanding officer, and he never showed up at drill. The entire story put out by McAuliffe and Michael Moore brilliantly last January, and miserably handled by Bush's rotten PR and and uh, and uh, press secretary. All right. So uh, let uh, okay. the, the, that the story is not known, and you know why? John John Kennedy. What do you mean that story's not known? The story I gave, this, I summarized what is known about George Bush. That this is you don't think that's correct. That's not correct. Okay, so you I've agree. It. So you agree uh, with the conclusion of the uh, panel with respect to what you just said mm -hmm. that the use of that material, which you just described was false and misleading. That's what the panel concluded. Even exactly. though it no. sounds like you agree with what the story said and that you agree even with what the documents No, say. I don't. And it, it's interesting. I was ready to, all right, but last January when I dug into this after the, after the uh, Terry McAuliffe assault on Bush, which I thought was brilliant, and the, the White House never got it off their back all the way to the election. Well, I mean, okay. yeah. That yeah, story. Ahead. I mean, uh, you, you, you seem to be an expert in, the, in, this, in this whole subject, and even you can't really dispute the veracity of the documents, or what they say. I dispute the veracity of the documents. You well, bet. But not what they say. What they say I dispute because it's not established anywhere else. All right, let's, let's come back to this point, because I think uh, we should get some commentary on um, the overall quality of this sure. report. Now, on the question of whether Bush joined the Air National Guard rather than going to Vietnam. There's no question. Okay, but hold on. This is what the report says. Um, this is after an interview with a fellow named Lieutenant Strong, who says what you just said, no question, okay? This is what the report says. The clear inf inference from the expert, from Strong, is that President Bush was in the Texas Air National Guard to avoid service in Vietnam. The panel finds virtually every excerpt used from the Strong interview was either inaccurate or misleading. And it goes on to say what should have been done in this program was CBS should have gone and interviewed other people like Tom Lipson who said that that statement uh, who would have said that statement was wrong? No, what yeah, do you I, don't think, think, I don't think Bush think? disputes that. I mean, uh, they, they sent these documents to the White House and they didn't dispute the documents. Not, only, not that they really could. Not because only they didn't has know Bush disputed it, but several people who were in the Air National Guard pointed out that Bush had indeed volunteered with his obsolete airplane to go with a, a flight of them that went over to Vietnam. So he volunteered to go to Vietnam after he was in the Guard. Nobody has established that he joined the okay, Guard to get out of, the, of going to okay, Vietnam. Okay, now let me ask as a I mean, isn't that why everybody joined the National Guard? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, in my day, you bet it was. There okay. you go. All right, let's, uh, let's put the, the question of the fact yeah. aside just for a moment. Okay. Just as a matter of journalistic practice, you're running a TV show.
okay? And you have someone at this point in time comes on and said that Bush did not join the ANG. Uh, he joined the ANG so he did not have to go to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Are you going to tell me, as a producer of a TV show, you would then go and interview six other people? You betcha. And if you were writing a report in the New York Times, you would every time you made that statement, you would have six other people contradict it? Well, I went to a typeface expert who was a registered Democrat and was voting for Kerry, okay? Uh, you can do things to clean up the process of evidence. It, my evidence was a lot more believable than it would have been if the guy was a, was a Bush supporter. Tom, you're making a good point. Uh, as, no, I don't think it is a good point, but you're mm -hmm. making a point as to the facts. But I can't really believe, as a person who's in journalism, you're going to use up all the space and all the time to contradict what is generally thought to be the case with respect to Bush's. Of course you would. You, you, so. You'd be reporting today's news six months from now. Yeah. I mean, no, no, your I news reported, report like six months to I air. reported today's news last January when I found no justice no, to any of this. No, you reported 1972's news last January. John John Kennedy basically looked into this in the November 2000 edition of George magazine. Now, he's not a well-known supporter of the Republican Party, and he found this all a crock of you-know-what. Okay, now hold on. Let's, let's, get back, let's get back to the point. And the point now is whether the committee panel is being fair with respect to its criticism of the report as a whole. And I'm picking up ports which perhaps one would not realize are in the report. Let me take a second one. The, the uh, uh, Dan Rather program interviews a gentleman whose name is Lieutenant Governor Barnes, okay? And they ask him, did you make a call to uh, see that uh, Bush would get into the Air National Guard? Yes, I, yes, I did. And the panel says, that excerpt, which I've just described to you, is false and misleading. You want to know why it's false and misleading? Because what Rather should have done was interviewed the person to whom the call was made and then asked whether that call had any impact upon the decision of the person who received the call as to the decision for does that make any sense? No, that's a classic example of using the, the, the standard of proof that we applied at a murder trial to a news report. It's go. just ridiculous. Well, wait a Are minute. Are you going to defend that one? Yeah, I'll, I'll back off on that because there's a difference between a civil trial, which is appropriate here, and a criminal trial. In a civil <laughs> trial, it's preponderance of evidence, correct? Uh, so I think the objective of good journalism, which we see little of these days, right. uh, and the reason that journalism is in a crisis and free fall that it is, is because journalists know how to do this. The Columbia Journalism School doesn't need to extend to two years. It needs to cut to six months and put people in the police, right. uh, police reporting for I'm six months. I'm sorry to interrupt, Tom. Yes. Do you support the panel's conclusion on that particular excerpt? Yes or no? All by itself, isolated? Yeah. Yes. I don't okay. support it. Okay. So, and, and he's right then that they're applying a legal standard to journalism. Now, I want to ask you okay. something. Does this report apply legal standards to journalism throughout in a way that is satisfactory to you? No. Not satisfactory Not to satisfactory you. to me. I, I, I have a higher standard than legal standards, which is a fairly low species no. of, 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 of work. Uh, journalist, journalistic standards are much higher, OK? And what's really lacking here, we go back to meshing, there's no balance in the attempt to go do this report. It isn't just she should have talked to the guy he, he made the call to. There were other people that should have been consulted in this entire manufacturing of a story, and they weren't. Okay, well now, he dodged the question. Uh, do you think the report as a whole applies legal standards to journalism and if the answer is yes, do you think that's appropriate? No, it's totally inappropriate. That's what it tries to do. I think there's two basic problems with that. One is that news reporting is happening much too fast. And there's no way you could do news reporting the way they, they want it to be done. Now, and even if you were doing it in a, in a much slower time frame, these documents simply could not be authenticated. The author was dead. You can't ask him if he wrote these documents. What you can do is ask if they're consistent with the known facts. They were. You can ask people who knew the man who wrote them if that's how he spoke. They did, and he did. So really, they didn't really make a major error, even as to the documents, even assuming the documents were false. Now, the known facts are not known, and they're not facts. I'm perfectly happy to have them established. Is this a poetry program? Or <laughs> no, I, I want to come back to the point. The, see, groupthink is in the press big time, OK? And everybody thinks these are known facts. That was Mary Mapes' problem. That's why she right. saw what she saw. They're not known. They're not proven. I'm open to having them proven. All right, now, Tom, mm -hmm. I want to focus you a little bit on the issue that we're trying to get at, and that's the quality of the report. And the question has been raised, we had one answer, that the standard that's been used here is not 
appropriate. Now, I want to ask you in the context of that another question with respect to the specifics in the report. As I said at the beginning when I was trying to explain what this, was, what this report was about to you, I said that the commission uh, established a standard known as chain of custody. That's a legal term which means that when you present a document into evidence, you know where the devil that document has been in each hand uh, that has held it. Mm -hmm. And they criticize, the report criticizes this uh, program for not knowing where the document was in a chain of custody. Now, does that make any sense to sure. you? Sure. Provenance no. is Sudby Park Burnett makes a difference too, all right? Provenance is everything. And when you have it coming from Burkett, for heaven's sakes, all right, you want to know who Lucy Ramirez is and you'd like to drive to her house and talk to her because well, Lucy, that's, that was a supposedly where he got the documents. No one has found Lucy Ramirez. Oh, Maybe yeah, Lucy she, Ramirez yeah, is the person. The person that was supposedly the source that Burkett got it from. Well, how when about, you couldn't find Lucy let's Ramirez. See I, let's see if I yeah. explain your point yeah, sure. to make it, make it clear, and I'll put a question to you. The point is that when Burkett was asked, where, do you get, where did you get the documents from, uh, first he said it was a pal who was in Texas, ordinarily, but in Germany. And then finally it was Lucy Ramirez. And uh, the CBS reporters couldn't keep up with his change of of story. They couldn't reach the fella in Germany. They called his home in Texas. Um, do you think he has a fair point? They might have tried a little harder to find the, the chain here, which is they, a little they, different. They, they he, that's the way he answered my question, which he didn't really answer. They my might question. have, but I mean, again, I, I don't think it's a major point. But I mean, supposedly sh they could have tried a little bit harder to find it. But basically, you're never going to get back to the end of it because the guy who wrote them, if he wrote them, is dead. So you only can do so much. I mean, th these are not the Hitler diaries. This is not the, uh, the w will of Howard Hughes. These are not dramatic and important documents in any way. So there's, there's a limit to what you're going to do. And I think they did more than than ever should be expected. No, well, all, all Ma Mary Mapes said about that was it's just going to affect the presidential election. Uh, I don't care about the Hitler Diaries or the other things you're talking about. This was, this in Mary Mapes' opinion, was to affect the presidential election. All right, now, I'm going to ask you the question. Mm -hmm. Is this panel's report flawed, yes or no? Yes. Um, <laughs> why didn't you tell us that? Thanks for coming back. <laughs> What are you going to say? No, I ask you the, I ask you the same question. Is I mean, this it, report it, flawed? It's hugely flawed. It, it's, it's hugely it's, flawed and flawed. Would you say it's hugely flawed? I agree with with the uh, counsel <laughs> for the defense. You think why? Well, there's several basic reasons. Quickly, the one is that the standard of, of proof is wrong. They use a legal standard that could never be complied with in a, in a newsroom. And two is they don't even reach the conclusion that they, as you said, that they blame CBS right. for not reaching. Thank Thanks you. very much for coming by. And thank you for coming by. I don't know whether we confused you tonight. We had a good debate going and then one side folded. But that's <laughs> the way the digital age goes. Come back next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I'm Jim Goodale. Good night.